All right, and what we got here is a uh, Carabiner 98K rifle sling, uh, probably post-World War II, but it looks kind of like it's been in the desert. It's, it looks dirty. What would you say about that one? So one thing is I would use to clean it would be your saddle soap and water. I can definitely tell that this was actually handmade. I see the stitching that is all done by hand, um, which is great craftsmanship. Uh, if this leather was actually in the desert, they took very good care of it. Um, I even see some tool marking that's going all the way along this belt, which I'm sure at one time when it was first made, it was gorgeous. A uh, little, little bit of saddle soap and water would definitely help clean this belt. And then afterwards, I'd go over maybe just a little bit of oil. And then after that, I'd probably go with some conditioning agent from, like I, I like to use Kiwi. Um, that neutral because it helps with the polish, helps with the shine. I like a lot of my leather to have a really pretty shine to it. All right, so the next one here, this is a bayonet and this is a M1 carbine bayonet and it would have been used during World War II as well. Uh, the leather uh, is pressed leather on the handle there. What do you say about that? Number one, it's gorgeous quality. Um, this leather, like you said, is a pressed leather so what it is, it's leather on top of leather on top of leather that has been pressed down um, to make the handle. And then what, it, what the individual did is they went ahead and sanded it down to actually make it a handle. Um, one of the easiest ways to preserve this is number one, to clean it using saddle soap and water. Let that dry, then afterwards go over with some, some great oil. Uh, I recommend Neat's Foot Oil again. Um, and it, what it'll do, it'll help revive a lot of those pores and uh, increase the, help increase the patina that's going to have on this. It's never going to look brand new again, which is, I think, one of the greatest factors of old leather like this because of the patina, um, which will make it look unlike anything else. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what can you tell me about this one? This is another uh, Mauser rifle sling. And it looks like it's got some white stuff on there. Yeah, so there's some white stuff on here, um, which is a mold. Um, now I can also tell that these rivets right here are actually brass. The way that I can tell that is because there's a greenish blue, um, which is typical when a little bit of water gets on that brass. And then the pores, it starts growing that uh, mold on it. Uh, one of the easiest things to go ahead and do to take off the mold would be use saddle soap. Uh, once you let that saddle soap set in with the water, let it dry, let it air dry for a really good time. I'd say in between 24 to 48 hours. Uh, after that's done, uh, go ahead and hit it with the saddle soap again, um, and then make sure that it's very well rinsed with the water. So then what I would do is I would use some oil, uh, replenishing agent and conditioning agent all in one, which I go back to Neat's Foot Oil. And then after that, I'd probably go with a conditioning agent, more like your neutral, uh, or shoe polish, and then buff it out. Um, do not ever use bleach on leather to try to take off that mold. All right, so here we go. Here's a sling here, and uh, this seems pretty cracked. It's kind of stiff. What do you say about that one? Okay, so with the stiffness on this, a little bit of oil will go a long way. Um, I like to use Neat's Foot Oil. Um, it soaks into the pores very well and it'll keep from the cracking. Now, some of these cracks are pretty deep cracks, so one of the best things is just to have the sling, if you're going to be using it, um, just to have it recreated. Um, it definitely looks like it was handmade. Uh, there is some stitching on it that was hand done uh, rather than using a machine, um, which shows the quality is great on it, um, but with the cracking, yeah, so some of these cracks are really deep. I don't think the oil would actually be able to work with that. So with that, um, you definitely wouldn't be using it every day. Um, so one thing that you could easily do um, if you wanted to fix a lot of these cracks is number one, use some Neat's Foot Oil, which will help condition this leather and soften up those pores. And then what you can do is you can actually use a, uh, a cement or type of glue. Um, I use barges glue or barges cement. And what it, what it will do is when you put it in the cracks, it'll actually help seal them. 
um, but it won't help with the malleability, but it will help fix those cracks a little bit, especially if you're just going to be using that sling for storage um, on that rifle. All right, Daryl, thanks for your insight on leather curation. Uh, those items that I showed him were uh, mine, uh, and, and they've not been best, kept in the best condition over time. So I hope to get them to a, a restored state, and probably I'll post it on my social media. And again, Daryl Phillips with DP Custom Leatherworks. And you can find us at Battlefield Curator uh, on Instagram, Facebook, and here's our YouTube page. So if you haven't already, be sure to pulverize that like button and subscribe for the algorithms. And uh, don't forget to learn history and curate history. Make it a great day.